Greetings. Welcome to Sessions. I'm Sam Cutris, and with me today will be uh, Eric. He'll be running the uh, software side of things. So we're going to be jumping back and forward, uh, looking at various approaches to text with, uh, with Shaper Origin. And uh, this is an interesting topic. We know a lot of people are using text and uh, customizing things, or maybe the whole project is a text-based project, for instance, uh, the signage world. But uh, yeah, we'll be looking at all the different techniques, approaches, hopefully some stuff you haven't considered, and uh, we'll dig into that. Text. First up, we've got the on-tool text. So there's, we call it text basic. It's uh, a very simple version of text. Here's the list of what we're going to go through. Text basic is designed to be super efficient. It's a single line font. We'll get a little more into that later. But the idea is that you can very rapidly, without moving origin, cut individual letters. Um, so it could be customizing bespoke furniture, or it could be just you know marking a fixture with specific information that you need, you know, right side, leg, three, that sort of thing. So dig in there, use that as much as you like. Um, I'll sort of show you what I mean by this. Yeah, so this is a great example of uh, text basic in operation. So you know this is all created on tool. I didn't touch a computer. Um, we're actually in, this is an interesting material. Uh, what's this one called again, Noah? Yeah, rich light, sorry. So it's a laminated, uh, it's like a phenolic and paper type thing. And uh, you'll see there's different different colors. So as I cut deeper, I get uh, you know contrast with my letters. So uh, we'll get into how to do some of these other ones, but the default behavior of uh, text basic is the top one here. So that's uh, just engraved and uh, really, you know, pretty punchy, pretty useful. We'll look at, as you get larger, we'll bring this one over as well. Sorry, Noah. Uh, we have this type of design. So this is one Jake did. So this is using the exact same tools, uh, text basic. We just happen to enlarge them when we place them. So you can choose what uh, height dimension you want for your text. Uh, and this is a great example of a ball nose cutter uh, and two different cutter radiuses. And you get some really interesting outcomes. Um, it's it's you don't have to plan too much because it's a single line cut. You just cut down the center, uh, and your cutter diameter determines the kind of character or of the characters. Excuse the pun. Um, so we can come over here, or actually I'll do it at that same station, uh, and show you what what basic text looks like in operation. So we'll come back here. Sorry, Noah. Um, I've just got, uh, this is a panel of like MDF with some white paint on the top surface. So that's gonna help with contrast. That's a common strategy for uh, getting things to be visible uh, without having to do any sort of post operations. There's several different techniques, like some people will uh, pour uh, CA glue and pigment into the gaps. Uh, there's all sorts of different approaches for getting high contrast. But one of them is to have a material that's uh, just got a lamination on top, much like we saw with the rich light, um, and then cut through it. So that'll reveal the different color beneath. Now, text basic is just in the create menu. Uh, for anyone who wasn't or isn't familiar with Origin, what I just did there was scan in the workspace. So we've got our tape laid out uh, at sort of three inch centers, four inch centers. And then I just pointed the camera, you'll see what the camera sees. Uh, across my the area, scanned it in. And now from this point on, Origin knows exactly where it is in 3D space. And I'm just zooming in and out by double clicking on the screen. You'll notice every little piece of this shaper tape uh, is recognized and turned blue. So that means we're good to go. Uh, if I was being really uh, cautious, I would create a grid in this state. Because uh, one thing, actually I will do this, uh, if you want to align text uh, next to other text and keep it dead uh, parallel, you're going to want to create a grid. So I'm just going to do an arbitrary one here. Uh, I'm going to set the depth at, a, at an arbitrary height and then just double click. So this just means that now everything I place can be relative to this grid. This grid isn't uh, aligned to the edges or anything. This is just a rough grid for me to lay things out on. Um, hopefully that'll become obvious as we start here. Now we'll go text basic and I'll type in something, just my name, sorry, done. 
So you can see I can just type on the fly. Uh, it's only capital letters. And you'll see here now, regardless of what orientation my origin is, uh, the actual text remains aligned to that grid um, that I set up. So I'm using, I can use either the bottom left uh, for my alignment point. You'll notice as I move around, it's snapping to different locations here. And this is determined by the grid spacing. So I've got like a half inch grid spacing and my text is snapping accordingly. I can zoom in and out in this state, uh, either using the slider on the right or pinch to zoom. And that'll just get me uh, oop, a clear understanding of what's going on. Now the green button on screen maps to the green finger button, place my text and I am good to go. So uh, this is actually quite a big letter, but uh, we'll do that now. You'll notice it's got a little blue dot. Uh, you have to start cutting at the ends of an open line. Uh, Eric's gonna dig, dig into that in the uh, software side of things later. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly set my offset to zero. Uh, I will do a Z touch. Whenever you put a new cutter in, always remember to Z touch. At the moment, I've got a little engraving cutter in here. Um, so it could be a little fuzzy with this MDF, but uh, we'll see how it works out. Now my depth settings, uh, you'll notice there's uh, a range of depths. You could type in anything you want here. Air cuts hover above the surface. Engrave, it actually just populates with uh, 0 0.02 inches. Um, and then my cutter is also an engraved cutter. This determines how thick the line is that I'm cutting. So, I mean, with an engraved cutter, your depth actually determines it, but I'll uh, show you what a quarter inch cutter looks like, just out of interest. Uh, it was just reminding me, do you want to do another touch off, which is uh, measuring the height of the cutter as it is chucked in, uh, and I do not. So if I was to cut this with a quarter inch cutter, uh, this is what my font would look like. So that's just a good sort of pre-flight check to make sure you're getting the right amount of detail. Because for instance, uh, if I had a really large cutter, which I don't, um, you'll see how this just gives you a quick idea of, okay, that's gonna be illegible. Uh, you know, I don't have a three quarters of an inch cutter in here, so that's fine. I'm gonna put that back to my engraved cutter. And every time I change the diameter, it's going to assume I've replaced the cutter. So I can just uh, uh, dismiss that Z touch. Right, let's see here. Power it up. Everything's ready to go. Z touch, doing an online cut. You can see there, uh, very quickly, we're getting a you know super punchy, super legible uh, S. Uh, and now we're going to go through some of the sort of hacks we can do with, uh, with, with simple text. So if I want to take this, uh, I can start by, I'll do a small version of the same thing. This is going to be pretty obvious for a lot of people initially. Um, so you notice at the moment, I've set my height to uh, 1.3 inches. So that's the height of you know an A or an S. Uh, it's all capitalized. So the default is going to be 0.3. Now what's interesting about this scale, you'll see it uh, is much smaller now. Um, you'll notice now the advantage of the grid hopefully is clear. I can uh, align my edge here um, and then snap in half inch increments and make sure that regardless of where my origin is placed, it's going to be parallel to the original text. So what's really interesting about this scale, we'll go to do another cut. Sorry, I should have warned you now, I'm about to cut. I'm gonna do an auto mode one here. And we're back. So I should make a quick note. Um, we'll switch to this front camera, Noah. So there's my little one lined up this way, half an inch lower this way. Now, what is interesting here is uh, when you're down at that uh, 0.3 height, we'll go back to the screen, uh, you'll see here that each character fits within the corrective range. So I'll do an air cut so we don't have to make noise and I can talk over it. Uh, the text basic is designed in a way that it's a single line font. So if I'm auto locked, you'll see it just moving on its own. 
and it's all one continuous font. So rather than being a bunch of separate lines that you have to retract and plunge for, uh, we can actually do these all by double clicking. I'll go into auto lock mode. So I'm double clicking the green button and you'll see the entire operation will be performed as it fits within the corrective range. So just a little note, if you are making text and you want it to be sort of efficient and the scale doesn't matter too much, uh, 0.3 is a great, great size to uh, start with. Another note, uh, you've got plunge speed is 15 and auto is eight. I think the default is 10. Just make sure, because if this is a high value, uh, especially for engraving delicate things like text, uh, it'll overshoot. Um, so this is just if you're you know, cutting something you don't care very much about, the auto speed is how fast origin moves when you're in auto mode. So if it suddenly collides with a 90 degree corner, we can sort of show you this. So you'll see this will uh, really race along, but it's, it's a little bit more violent and you'll notice that the cut quality will uh, deteriorate. So that's a balancing act you can uh, decide on. Do you want to get this thing done super quick or do you want it to be uh, super clean? So a value of uh, eight to 10 is, that's if you want really high quality outcomes. Uh, and you can turn it all the way up to, you saw there, 35. Uh, so that's you know absolutely flying, um, which would be productive, but not very elegant. Um, now, there's a couple of other interesting things we looked at here. We'll go to that front view again, Noah. So uh, I showed you condensed and expanded. Whilst we don't have that as like a, a feature on the basic text tool, we can kind of cheat it. So I'll show you a couple of cool little hacks that will uh, enable you to do that. It's basically just a matter of going to design mode. We'll go back to the tool screen, Noah. And copy the shape. And we'll come down here. I'm going to stick with my bottom left uh, alignment position. And then I'm going to go scale. So I've copied the shape. And I'm going to, we can scale in both axes. So that would be a you know uniform scale. Or we can do this, just change them together. So now I can do one independently. So instead of typing in a number here, I'm just going to go times two. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, and this is going to get me an expanded look. So it's the same height, it's just longer. So uh, we'll place that and uh, see what we get there. And then the same is true. We'll copy another one and come down here another step. And remember to deactivate the link and then just go uh, divided by 1.5. And then we get a you know condensed shape. So you'll see there, standard, expanded, condensed. I'll cut this one just out of curiosity to show you. Um, you ready not? There we see a sort of little squashed horizontally version there. Um, oh, you might not be able to front view Noah. We'll see that vaguely. Yeah. Um, and expanded is, yeah, the opposite. Uh, horizontally more uh, scaled, spread out. But that's obvious from the screen here. Um, so beyond that, we can get into uh, various cutters. So if I... Or we'll look at this front one here. So this was done with an eighth inch cutter. Um, hopefully we can see in there with the same uh, the same text basic. So you just scale up the text. Oh yeah, that works better. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the stock eighth inch cutter, um, and it was it was able to cut that very nicely. Um, then we'll get into some other interesting variants. This one's for a friend of ours, Simon. You might have seen in the um, in the promotional videos. Uh, he owns a little company called Normal that does uh, a 
custom furniture and stuff. So this was uh, cut into machinable brass. I believe it's uh, three, 360, uh, very machinable brass. And this was with a 132nd inch uh, cutter. So, and then pouring enamel into it. Um, we'll get into some of the techniques uh, for preparing these types of files with Eric shortly. Um, but I just want to bring your attention to some sort of more just creative ideas and, and ways that you can approach this. Here's another example of a cutter that's sort of pretty interesting to use with, with text. Uh, I might actually cut some shapes with this. You know, this is the opposite of a ball nose. This is a roundover cutter, uh, but it can, it can produce uh, interesting uh, text shapes. Now, uh, we will hand over to Eric. Um, what he's going to do is get into the software side of things. So he's going to run you through using Illustrator primarily. Um, but this is just any old uh, 2D vector editing software. You can do this with uh, most of the software we refer to on our website. Um, the, go to support.shapertools.com. Uh, and you'll see we've got callouts for, say, Affinity Designer, Illustrator, uh, Inkscape, all the save settings and just things you need to pay attention to to get the best outcomes uh, when you're creating set text in software. Um, right, so take it away, Eric. Hey, everyone. So as Tim showed, you can do a lot with the onboard uh, text basic with the tool. But if you want to get into anything more complex, uh, different fonts, different spacing, different sizing, then you have to go into a design program to manipulate those fonts further. So there's a few basic things we'll dive into that will be pretty universal across all the various design softwares. Um, everything I do here on Illustrator, the same basic thing can be done on everything else. So uh, Noah, if you want to come over to my screen. So first, I just have a basic font. Um, one of the main things you need to do when making your cut. So if we take this and we just type, uh, home, sweet home, we want to make a sign for your Christmas present to mother. Always a good idea. So this is standard, uh, editable text. You can, it works like Microsoft Word. Uh, you can delete, you can change it. Uh, if you send this the way it is to the tool, Origin will not be able to read this. You need, the one basic thing you need to do is you need to expand the shape. Uh, so if, on Illustrator, if you right click, you go down to create outline. This is also found in type create outlines. And then that expands the shape. So now it is so we can really so once we do this take this basically so we can take this and ungroup it and then you can apply the shaper style to it to cut it in the right cut path so then once we take this that's expanded and colored, uh, if anyone's wondering on the community page, you can get this plugin that has all the different color to create. So you can click it and it'll automatically change from inside to outside. So text straightforward. Now what I'm sure some of you are wondering is with different fonts. So Noah, if you can pull up that pocketing fonts uh, slide. I'll pick up and explain what's going on here. He can do the video, the manipulating of the software. So what we're looking at here basically is, this is just regular fonts and you're typing these out in Illustrator or any vector editing package. What we're seeing here highlighted in blue is what happens if you cut them with an eighth inch cutter. So you'll notice the, the bold, the big bold ones, we're able to clear everything pretty straightforward. We don't get into the pointed corners. And then you'll see over in the dosis uh, font, it's almost the same thickness the whole way around. So you'll notice that one uh, actually translates great to cutting with any CNC 
CNC machine. This is not an origin specific thing. Any machine that's working in a two and a half D type paradigm is going to benefit from, you know, if the thickness of each letter stroke is approximately somewhere between the cutter diameter to two times the cutter diameter, you're going to get a really efficient and clean result. Now, things start to get a little squirrely when you get down into the serif and script type fonts down here. You'll see there's areas that that cutter can get to. Now, what is this? How would we compensate for this? We can either say, okay, I'm not going to pocket this out. I'm going to engrave the perimeter, in which case we can get to all the detail. I can actually show that here on my, on my tool, Noah. Um, I'll import this file and we'll look at it live rather than just a, a uh, sheet here. So, sorry, we've got some cruft here, but the bottom two are the most uh, important ones to look at. So. Uh, this is uh, set up the same way as Eric did. Uh, it's an inside cut. So that's all predetermined when he applied the color codes uh, to it. Now I can tell it uh, my cutter is going to be an eighth inch cutter. And then I will dismiss this and I'll just put this into air cut so we can talk over it. So you can see the areas that Origin can get to, right? So it can't cut into these fine corners. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Now. We can either scale this file up and continue to use an eighth inch cutter, in which case we would be able to clear this, but that may not be what you're after. So we can do the opposite. Uh, we can compensate by making the cutter smaller. So if I go uh, divided by two, dismiss. Now you'll see I'm getting into all these details. I'm not getting all the way to this corner, um, but that is sort of an artistic decision that's up to you to decide whether or not you need to do that. Um, this is most importantly for the, uh, the resin pour type operations. I'll get this here. Uh, Noah, can you go to the front camera? Uh, so here's an example of a, a situation where that would make sense. So this is a, uh, Jake did this one, and it's been prepared uh, as a, for a resin pour, which means he doesn't have to get super precious about all these corners, whether they're slightly rounded by the cutter diameter. Um, or actually I'll bring it down here where it's clearer, or if they're uh, straight edges uh, to this other screen down here, Noah, the, the little camera. So what you'll notice here is the inside edges are sharp and the outside edges are rounded. And when you're doing uh, either paint or resin pour, that's not a big issue. But uh, when you're back here on tool, uh, you get a sneak peek of what I was messing around with there. Uh, when you're back on tool, um, it only matters once you get into inlays, which uh, Eric will will spell out for us in a second, uh, or I will. We'll see. Um, the other option is we can tell this that it's an online cut. So if I have an engraving cutter in there, uh, there's no issues with corner following because we're following right down the center of this path. Uh, I'm always going to cut at whatever detail level um, is, is embedded in the file. So you see here, this one doesn't quite join that link. But if I want to keep this scale and I've, I want to use this cutter, uh, I can always say, hey, I'll just engrave this. Um, so actually, I'll, I'll do that now and we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, I've got the eighth inch cutter in here. I'll switch quickly to an engrave cutter. And I will remember... Uh, we could probably switch to that front screen to show people how what's going on here. So I'll quickly swap this out. Yeah, with the engraving cutter. And show you the differences here. Now keep in mind, if you have a radius baked into something, we'll go back to the screen here, Noah. If you have a radius baked into your file, uh, you can always go up in multiples of two, right? So so long as you use the calculator to scale by a factor of two, you can move from the quarter inch cutter, if your radius is a baked in with that in mind, that'd be an eighth inch radius, to the eighth inch radius, which, uh, sorry, eighth inch cutter, which is a 16th inch radius. 
So making this, the file exactly half the size means you'll be able to cut that detail. Um, so you can, get, you can make the files bigger, but the moment you start making them smaller, you will run into the issues we've been showing you here where uh, Origin can't get into all these details like that. Uh, but thankfully, it shows you what's going to happen. So I'll just quickly, uh, I'll, I'll engrave this and show you what this will look like. Um, and also, keep in mind, like I'm using the default engrave setting, right? Engrave, uh, which is 0.02. You're not tied to that. That's just a, a good starting point. So uh, I'll actually do it a bit deeper out of interest, um, 0.04. And we'll look at this result. So it's about to get noisy now. Uh, if you could see my face, it's got a smug look on it right now. So I'm just waiting for the spindle to stop. I forgot the Z-touch. Uh, because I didn't change the cutter diameter, it uh, didn't remind me. Now, if you've chucked up the cutter higher, uh, that's not going to be a problem. But if it's lower, it will be a problem. It'll uh, cut into your material. So that shows you what you get with a uh, deeper cut um, doing an online uh, engraving cut. We'll cut to that front screen just to quickly look at that, Noah. Yeah, so that's that's that outcome. Uh, another thing worth mentioning, this can be embellished with uh, offsets live on tools. So if I make this an outside cut instead of an online cut, uh, we can add a little bit of extra detail. So uh, point oh, point oh 0.05. And then I'll make it an outside cut. So this will just give me a, a weird little border. And I'll make this uh, 0.01. So I'm going shallower. Actually, I'll double that. All right, 0.1. So I'm doing a bigger offset and a shallower cut. We'll see what this looks like. It's about to get noisy. You'll see that front screen again. You know, you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, you know, it's it doesn't have to be predetermined or baked into the file. You can just sort of run with it however you feel fit. So maybe we'll look at uh, Eric's screen again to run us through uh, single line text info, and uh, we'll see if we can hear him again. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk over it, um, and Eric's going to export this. Oh, we'll, yeah. So here we're looking at uh, setting up the file. We're just creating some text in uh, Illustrator. You'll notice this is editable text. So uh, it's, it's now, he can mess with this. Uh, and you'll notice the way it behaves is like in a, in a uh, you know, Google Docs. If you double click on it, it'll start editing the text as individual characters. Um, so he's looking for a particular uh, single line text file. Um, now, this is from a website called uh, singlelinefonts.com. And uh, you notice it displays a little strangely inside of Illustrator. So this is just a common thing you have to keep an eye out for. You know, a lot of single line fonts, sorry, software, 2D vector editing software packages treat single line fonts as though they're closed shapes. So every individual shape, uh, it's going to try and draw it to a complete closed shape. Now, Eric's going through and doing spacing and uh, editing the text as individual characters. 
This is the one thing you have to do prior to saving a file to origin. Uh, you need to turn it into outlines. So at the moment, we're looking at editable text. So this is what we call live text. Um, so you can select it. It puts that big uh, cursor around it. Now, with it selected, and the, he's going to go type create outlines. So this now is turning it into a format that Origin can understand. Um, so now you'll see when he starts selecting the text, um, he's going to see it behave quite differently. So now you'll see all the points, and it's now just like a big object. It's like uh, literally curves. So uh, you'll see how they now edit like that. So this one's not a true single line font. Uh, you'll notice uh, if he drags these points, it actually loops back on itself. So that can be confusing for a lot of people. So you know, text fonts in general uh, pretend to be single line fonts, like what we saw on the uh, text basic, by just uh, doing closed shapes and then cutting back on themselves like that. So uh, what this means is when we get it on tool, which we'll show over here, Noah. Um, I'll end up kind of cutting it twice, uh, which you know it's it's not as uh, optimized as as the uh, the text basic approach, but the cool thing is this gives us a lot of options. So if I go cut, you notice here there's no dot, like I don't have to start cutting this line everywhere, uh, anywhere particular. So that means that that's a closed shape, even though it's got no thickness, no area. Uh, it's a closed shape. The other thing you'll notice is each one of these elements uh, is a separate, going to be a separate operation. They're not all chained together. So this is one of the you know uh, downsides of just getting random fonts and having a go. Um, so I've got it in air cut, and I'll show you how this behaves. So I just cut, and you'll see it's just going to bounce back and forward because it, as far as origins concerned, it's it's following a big loop, um, even though it looks like a single line. So to perform this one, you know, you would you would basically approach it the exact same way. Uh, you'll just find that Origin will uh, have to loop or will enable you to continue looping across itself. You just need to retract when it's appropriate, and make sure you uh, notice all the little details as you go. Um, so that's a, a good good primer on uh, how to how to take use of uh, this particular type of single line font. Um, and that will get you up and running doing all sorts of uh, scripts and, and weird stuff like that. So you notice that one uh, loops back that way, which is curious. But that would get you uh, those shapes. So uh, we'll move on to the next demonstration, uh, which will be prepping for resin and paint. Um, so... I can just grab a, yeah, here's the, so this is the the image I showed you of uh, Jake's work. So this would be just taking any file. Uh, you don't have to be too precious about um, about how your corners are rounded. We mentioned that. I will cut back to my screen and see if I got an example here. So uh, this CA one is a good example. Um, this, it's getting a bit cluttered here, isn't it? We'll just do the C, and I'll show you what this means. So this one's actually set out to be cut as a positive element, which we'll get to next. But uh, I'm going to show you how we can adapt that on the fly. So if I want to cut this as a uh, for, for a resin pour, um, we would just go cut. Oops, cancel cut. And you'll see here, I've got my file set up as an outside cut because it's designed, I'll pop this off so you can see, with this type of cut in mind. Um, so you'll see the little holes in it are designed for aligning pins on a positive element. Um, but we're just going to reuse it, uh, as is the way with Origin. Uh, we don't predetermine everything. You can you can mix it up and do what you want. So we're going to make this an inside cut. And I'm going to remove my offset. And now you'll see I'm cutting. Um, we'll tell it we're doing an eighth inch cutter. Dismiss. Yeah, so you'll see that's the type of uh, amount of material we'll remove with a, uh, with a, we'll delete this one. It's all right. 
So that's the type of uh, cuts we'll be able to perform with an eighth inch cutter here. Now, if I did want to get into this corner and remove more, I would just use a smaller cutter. So uh, divide by two, dismiss, and that would get you uh, all the detail you need. So this fi uh, file is obviously designed for a 16th inch cutter. Um, but the, the cool thing about doing it as a resin pour, as we showed in that original image, was we don't have to be precious about this. If, if your serifs get truncated, uh, often it's, it's not to the detriment of the design. Um, you can also use offsets to help you overcome that. So if I was, uh, uh, sorry, we'll change this to an eighth inch cutter and dismiss this. If I did a small offset, you'll notice we'll get further into these, uh, these areas. So 0 0.02, a negative offset, it'll uh, expand how far it gets. And that, that's a you know, perfectly valid approach as well. You just have to you know, keep in mind it's going to make your whole uh, character thicker. Um, yeah, so now when it comes to, so you'd cut the pockets. Um, I'll do it as an air cut because uh, it's uh, going to be a bit messy because it's only me who's able to talk, it seems, here at the moment. So I'm just going to air cut it, and you guys will have to imagine what that's like uh, actually cut. But uh, yeah, so you would perform your cut like so uh, on the inside and outside. And then as with Origin, for a thing like this, which is ultimately a pocket, we're still going to have an area in the center here we need to remove material. Uh, we'll have to then change this to a pocket operation to clear that out. But uh, I'll just quickly do that up here. So now if I take that same shape and say pocket, now we can clear out the center material. Also worth noting, at this stage, it may make sense to actually change to a larger cutter. So here's a quarter inch cutter. And we'll dismiss that reminder. And you'll notice now we can just uh, paint by numbers type clear that material out. So our, our cut history will tell us uh, exactly what we've removed and then we'll be able to pour paint into that, or, or resin, depending on how you do it. Um, one thing to note, the, uh, the resin, you're going to want to seal any... Uh, we'll cut back to this front view. Uh, you're going to want to seal the, uh, the wood first, with either like a, a clear, uh, the front view here, Noah. Um, just with a clear acrylic or something like that, if, if you don't before you uh, pour in highly contrasted uh, pigment or, uh, or resin, it's going to uh, bleed out sort of with capillary action down the, uh, the wood grain and you'll get a really messy edge. Um, yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing that sort of work. Um, we can have a quick look at this one, maybe this camera here, Noah, the little one. Uh, yeah, so this is that exact same file, but it was prepared uh, on the workstation. Uh, we used those little holes to uh, use alignment pins. So these are little 16th inch Dowrin pins. And what I did was use them to align uh, to my, my backer. These ones sit proud, uh, so it's totally up to you what you want to do there. Um, that's one option. Uh, and the, the key here to remember is when cutting the positives, you have to flip the file. So I'll show you that, that uh, we've already done that elsewhere, but I'll show you what that looks like here. I think we'll be pretty close to time soon. How long we got, Noah? 15. Okay, cool. Uh, so I will be able to, uh, we'll be able to do this. So return to this workspace and then show me my, my tool view, Noah. Um, so here is, here is the file I cut uh, just here of the, this background piece that we were just looking at. Um, so that's cut right way up. So you'll see here the file looks exactly like this. And then when we go to cut it again, um, I'll remove this one. So when I go to cut the positives, 
I'll import it just the same way I did. Uh, make sure you don't change the scale of anything. Um, and then there's, here's a little flipping trick. Often you end up having to cut the back. So you notice I want to cut my my little uh, Dowrin mounting alignment holes from the back. This makes life so much easier when you assemble these things. Um, I just use that same trick. So I decouple uh, the scaling, and then in width, I just hit negative. Done. Uh, that then enables me, uh, I wouldn't do it into this, I'd do it into a uh, thin piece of stock like so. Yeah, sorry, hard to see that. Uh, but that then enables us to cut those uh, from the back, um, and that has the added advantage of the fact the upcut uh, yeah, sorry. The upcut cutter is pulling the material towards the back, so you get your fuzzy edge on the back face um, of your of your letters. Uh, what I mean by that is this edge is very clean because I would have cut it like this, and this back edge is a little fuzzy. So uh, um, another thing to note here is always I'll, I'll show you how we set this up. Pump this one off. Um, for this particular one, I was using, uh, well, cut to this camera now. Yeah, for this particular one, I was using uh, Douglas fir at about uh, 0.2 inches thick. Uh, this is this is thinner, so you wouldn't probably wouldn't do the standoff approach. But uh, just quickly, uh, we have our double-sided tape. This is on the store, by the way, um, and that's that's kind of all you need to do to make sure that it's going to stay in place during cutting. Um, and then press it down here. This is where the, uh, the workstation gets really effective. And just use this to get us quick vertical alignment. Bring the friction to the middle position. Bring this up. Now I've got a flat surface to uh, to cut on. Um, and then just make sure that the, the characters you're cutting cross over that center market there. What's that, sorry? Um, and then we can come back here and cut this file. For preparing for inlay, what we have to do is adjust all the radii all the corners of your cut so that the bit can completely remove the material on the inside cut and the outside cut when you're cutting your positives and negatives. Uh, if you just do one or the other when you cut back, when you cut and try to put them together, then they won't match up. Uh, so Noah, if you want to come to my screen. So here is some basic shapes. We have, this represents a, a, a eighth inch bit. And if we can highlight all these corners, one of the quick and dirty way to do it is if we can just take all of the corners and then we want to adjust the radius to half of the bit width, because that's going to be the radius of the corners. So that's going to be for a one eighth inch bit it's going to be a 16th, so 0 0.0625 inches. And that will round everything over. So that is a pretty, pretty quick and easy way. Uh, there is a more time-consuming way, and that includes uh, doing an offset of, make an offset line of half of the width so if you want to go to path and then offset path go into negative 0 0.625 inches so that creates that offset path and we want to make the stroke 0.125 inches and make sure those corners are nice and rounded so this emulates the cut path. And then we want to take that, expand the stroke, because right now the stroke, it's just a, because right now it's just a line, there's nothing there. 
expand that. And now this stroke is an actual line. And so if we delete the inside, it'll give us one side and we can repeat that on the outside with a positive offset. Really confusing to show. We'll yeah. make some video to put up to you guys with a more step-by-step uh, -step process, but there is a way to do all the path in once. Yeah, I'll make a quick note. So here's the challenge, right? You've got a, a solid object. You've got in mind these very square, sharp corners, and you sort of assume, hey, I'll just cut that with origin. But keep in mind, you've got the diameter of the cutter. So in, the point here is that inlays are the most challenging to manage in terms of they're the most destructive to detail, because we'll show as we go through this that both the inside and the outside corners will get rounded one when you cut the positive, one when you cut the negative. So there's options. Here's showing what that looks like. So when I'm cutting the positive, you'll see the outside corners sharp, but those inside corners get rounded. The, the cutter never gets in there. We'll go to the next one. And the exact same thing is happening with our negative. So this is the pocket and it leaves any sharp, acute angle materials left there. So when you go to try and mount the two of them, you'll see that's the area where they're gonna collide. Like the, that's the, the positive is gonna collide on the inside and the negative is leaving material on the outside edge. So you can chisel that out. We'll go to the next slide. That's one option, pretty time consuming. Or you can do basically what Eric was talking about there. You can go in and round the corners or we can see how we've rounded all the corners on the file to make sure that the actual cutter is behaving the same way on both the inside and the outside corners. And depending on the diameter of the cutter that you plan for, you'll use more acute or softer radiuses. So it's always just gonna be half the diameter. I guess that's obvious, but that's how uh, Eric just showed you there was a good way of getting an idea of whether or not, the, the, it's sort of a simulation of the cutter. It's a, it's a quick view of like what origin is going to do. So you put in the stroke becomes the cutter diameter, and then you just offset it inwards by its radius. But we'll we'll spell that out more clearly when we've got more time in a, in a separate video. Yeah, one thing, quick thing we can show is, uh, if you want to come back to my screen, how to hack single line text. So the website that we got these fonts from is singlelinefonts.com. And so you can purchase these for a couple of dollars and they are beautiful, work really well. I know there's a lot of demand for people trying to use these fonts. But if you want to try to make your own, what you can do is take a font that has a nice solid width all the way through. Few fonts are going to be perfectly similar, but we can find one that's pretty close. And then take that path and then offset that path inward to try to fake a single line path. So let's try to do... And this is kind of just a guesstimation of pulling it in as much as you can to get it as close as possible. However, if you go too far, you start to lose these lines. And so you have to find it as close as you can. So that's a really good technique to try to adjust text to make it single lines. So you can cut it smaller uh, and get some really high fidelity with your small cuts. Agreed to. Also worth noting, uh, that's achievable on tool as well with the off offset function. So uh, you can take your text. I'm just returning to that workspace. How is it? Uh, it looks like it's working here. Yep. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I deleted that previously, but uh, yeah, we'll drop it in there again. <laughs> Sorry, on the last little session, we blew it away. So what uh, Eric was showing here was the same thing, um, and we can mimic it all on tool. So if you want to get precious, you can prepare it in advance. Uh, so I'm going to make this, it's an inside cut. I'll make my diameter super small, dismiss, uh, and then I'll do an offset of like, say, 0.1. Uh, and this is actually uh, worth noting. You'll see here, there's areas where the, the file has vanished. So this is obviously beyond 0.2 uh, inches thick, so 0.08. And you'll see at some point, 
we'll get text that goes the whole way around. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, an alternative approach to uh, what Eric was doing there in Illustrator. Um, okay, that uh, that's a wrap for the the basics of text. Uh, reach out to us if there's anything more you'd like to learn about, like specific techniques. Um, a lot of it is covered in the inlays section. So you know we were we gave you a little idea about how to approach preparing files for inlays. Thank you for tuning in. Don't be a stranger. Contact us and uh, ask for what you want to learn more about for uh, the next one.